This is the answer key for the circles unit exam review. First question, what is the equation of a circle with a radius of 6 and a center at 6, negative 4? When you put this into standard form, you have to go with the opposite values of 6 and negative 4. So automatically I know it's going to be a negative 6 and positive 4 inside the set of parentheses. That eliminates choices 1 and 3. And with a radius of 6, written in standard form, I have to take 6 and square it, which gives me 36. So the answer to number 1 is choice 4. Again, with regard to circles in standard form, the center I'll write it down here. The center is negative 3, comma 1, and the radius is the square root of 16, so that's equal to 4. So the circle with a center at negative 3, 1, and a radius of 4 is choice 2. Number 3. Which choice correctly identifies the center and the radius of the circle expressed by the equation x squared plus y squared plus 10x minus 2y plus 16 is equal to 0? So the first thing you need to do is group the like variables together. So x squared plus 10x, leave a space, plus y squared minus 2y, and that's equal to a negative 16. Take one half of the middle term and square it. That gives us a 25. So we're going to add 25 to both sides. Again, for the y terms, take one half of the middle term and square it. Take that result and add it to both sides. So the sum to the right here we get is 10. We're going to factor these two trinomials in terms of x and in terms of y. This is the completing the square portion. So written as one factor, we get x plus 5 square plus y minus 1 square. So that tells us the center is equal to negative 5, comma 1, and the radius is equal to the square root of 10 and that is defined in choice 4. Number 4. In the diagram below, line segment EC is tangent to circle B at C. EA is tangent to circle B at A. If the measure of angle CDA is equal to 25 degrees, find the measure of arc CA. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this value and put it into my diagram. So that's an angle CDA is 25 degrees. That goes right here. And we want to find arc CA. Well, I know that angle CDA is an inscribed angle. That's this angle right here. And because it's inscribed, that's equal to 1 half the measure of the arc that it intercepts, which is CA. So the CA is double the value of 25, which makes it 50 degrees. That is choice 1. Number 5. In the diagram below, B, C, D, and E are on circle O. Diameter B, D is drawn, and G, F is tangent to circle O at B. Which of the following angles is not a right angle? So when we evaluate all the choices that are given, the first one is angle B, C, D. This is an inscribed angle and opens up to the arc of a semicircle. A semicircle has 180 degrees, and as a result, the inscribed angle is equal to one half the measure of that arc, so that is indeed equal to 90 degrees. So this can't be the answer. Angle CBG. It's pretty obvious. 
that that's an inscribed angle that does not open up to a semicircle, and it appears as though that's an acute angle that's definitely less than 90. So the answer is probably choice two, but I'm going to review the other choices just to make sure or prove that choice two is indeed my answer. Choice three, angle BED. If I outline it, I see that that's an inscribed angle also because the vertex is on the circle. That opens up to this semicircle over here, so that's one half the measure of an arc that's worth 180 degrees. So this is equal to 90 degrees, so this can't be the answer. And angle FBD, FBD is a, is, FB is a part of a tangent here, so I'll do my best to highlight it in black. And then BD is the diameter. So part of the diameter, one half the diameter is a radius, and we know that the property of a radius that touches the tangent is always a right angle. So this is equal to 90 as well. So yes, the obvious answer is choice two. Number six, in the diagram of circle A shown below, chords C, D, and E, F intersect at G, and chords C, E, and F, D are drawn. Which statement is not always true? Let's evaluate each choice. For number one, line segment C, E is congruent to F, D. Well, it's pre pretty apparent that they don't look to be congruent. So my gut is saying choice one, but I'm going to evaluate the other three just to make sure. Angle C, G, E, is congruent to F, G, D. Yes, we know that vertical angles are congruent, so that is true. For choice three, I have C, E over E, G is equal to F, G over F, D. Okay, um, I meant to write this as a proportion, and I did not write it correctly for it to be eliminated. So um, I'm going to write it correctly, and you can fix this in your review packet. On the test, it will be all correct. You're not going to have to <laughs> do anything to change it. So really what I wanted to say is CE over EG is proportional to FD over DG. Okay, and this makes it not a choice because they, we're showing that these two triangles are have proportional sides which make them similar and that would this to be true. So the choice for this, that's not always true. Because they're similar triangles, we know that the side lengths are not going to be the same. That goes back to the rigid motion of dilation. We have angle measures preserved, but lengths of sides are not preserved. So the answer to this is choice one. In the diagram below, line segment DF is tangent to circle B at A. DG is tangent to circle B at C. The measure of angle ABC is 90 degrees. Which of the following statements is true? The first thing that I notice in this diagram is that I have a radius touching two tangents that makes these two right angles. I also know that ABC is a central angle, so that arc AC also has a measure of 90 degrees. And I also can tell that angle E, or AEC, is an inscribed angle, opens up to the same arc AC, which is 90. So inscribed angles have one half the measure of the arcs that they intercept. So this 
has an angle measure of 45 degrees. And if I wanted to find angle D, that's an outside angle, I have arc AC, which is 90, 360 minus 90 gives me, so 270 minus 90 divided in half equates to 90 degrees, which it seems like this would have ended up to be 90 anyways, because we know all righty I are congruent, so AB is congruent to BC, which is more than likely congruent to CD and AD, so this is probably a square, this quadrilateral, a four-sided figure. So I just proved that it is. So if you look at choice one, is the measure of angle AEC less than the measure of angle ABC? 45 is less than 90, so that's true. And is that less than the measure of angle ADC? And no, these two would be equal, so it can't be choice one. Measure of angle AEC less than ABC, yes. And is ABC equal to the measure of angle ADC? Yes, that looks correct. But let's check the other ones to make sure. AEC is less than ADC, correct. And that's less than ABC, nope, because they're equal. And it says the measure of angle AEC is greater than ABC, no way, because AEC is 45 and that's less than 90, so it is choice two. Which of the following circles has negative 9, 2 as its center? So immediately if you look at choices A and B, choice B works, A does not, and we're going to have to uh, use completing the square for C and D to check and make sure what the center is. So let's start with C. X squared grouped with 18x, y squared grouped with negative 4y is equal to a positive 12. Okay, so 1 half of 18 is 9, squared is plus 81. 1 half of 4 is 2, squared is plus 4. So this factor is x plus 9 squared plus y minus 2 squared. And this has a center equal to negative 9, 2. So c works. So it appears as though b and c work. Let's check d. So x squared plus 16x. Take 1 half of 16 is 4. I mean 8 and square it, that's 64. We have y squared minus 4y, take 1 half of that and square it, plus 4. So we have a center, well let's factor first, x plus 8 square. Okay, so this definitely will not work because this is 8 and we need a 9, so d does not work. So. Um, B and C, only choice three. Number nine, in circle O shown below, diameter AC is perpendicular to CD at point C, and chords AB, BC, AE, and CE are drawn. Which statement is not always true? So let's evaluate the following four choices. Angle BAC is congruent to DCB. So BAC is it congruent to angle D, C, B? Well, the answer to that is yes, because they're both inscribed angles that open up to the same arc, and the arc that they open up to is B, C, so that works. A, B, C. Okay, so that opens up to the semicircle here, so we know that's a right angle is congruent to angle ACD. Okay, so I have a diameter here, 
Okay, so one half of it is the radius that opens up to this tangent CD, so that's a right angle. So these two are congruent, so that's true. Angle A E A C E A C is congruent to A C B. Not sure if that one's going to be the correct one. Doesn't appear as though that that would be um, congruent. And angle C B A is that congruent to angle A E C? Yes, it is because AEC is an inscribed angle that opens up to a semicircle, so this arc. So this is a right angle, and we already know that angle B is right. So this works out. So the obvious answer is indeed choice 3. Number 10. In the diagram below, DC, AC, DOB, and CB, and AB are chords of circle, circle O. Line FDE is tangent at point D and radius AO is drawn. Sam decides to apply this theorem to the diagram. A tangent radius is a right angle. Which angle is Sam referring to? Let's evaluate the selections. Choice 1, angle CDE. Okay, that's definitely not a right angle. Angle BDF. Okay, so this is a diameter. One half of it is a radius, and when it touches a tangent, we know that it's a right angle. That's a property. So that's going to work. Let's just look at the other ones. Angle ACD. Definitely not a right angle. And angle DBA. Not a right angle because that's an inscribed angle and that's going to open up to arc AD and that's definitely not a semicircle. So choice two it is. Part two, these are two-point questions. There are three of them on the test. So we're given a picture or a graph of a circle, and now we want to write the equation of the circle in standard form. So we know the equation in standard form is x minus h square plus y minus k square is equal to radius square. And since I know that the center is 3, negative 3, and the radius to be 1, 2, 3, 4. I can put it into standard form. So x minus 3 square plus y plus 3 square is equal to 4 square, which is 16. So that's the equation for this given circle. Number 12, in the diagram below of circle O with diameter BC and radius OA, Chord DC is parallel to chord BA. If the measure of angle BCD is equal to 20 degrees, so I'm going to put that in there, determine and state the measure of angle AOB. So I'm looking for X right here. Some key information that we were told earlier is that DC is parallel to chord BA. So DC is parallel to DA. That means these two arcs are congruent. And if I know that the angle of C is 20 degrees, that's an inscribed angle. And that's one half the measure of the arc that it intercepts, and the arc that it intercepts is DB. So I'm going to double it in order to get 40 here. Then I know that this is 40 over here. I have central angle COA. So this is 40, and that lies on a line next to angle, the angle X that I've labeled. So 180 minus 40 is equal to 140. That means the measure of angle AOB is equal to 140. Number 13, a tangent segment and a secant segment are drawn to a circle from the same external point. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that circle. I have a tangent as well as the secant going out to the same external point. If the length of the segment secant segment is 25 and the length of its external segment is 3, find the exact value of the length of the tangent. So I'm going to label that as x. So one of the properties that we know from circle number theorems is that 
you take the whole secant and multiply the external, and that's equal to the tangent square. So the whole of the secant is 25, as given, external is 3, that's equal to x squared. 75 is equal to x squared. And it says, uh, find the exact value. That means I'm going to um, simplify when I take the square root of both sides. 75 is not a perfect square, but I know that breaks down to a 25 times 3. So the exact value of this tangent is 5 ra radical 3. Number 14. In the company diagram of circle O, line ADB and line ADC are secant chords BE and CD intersect at F. Tangent GH intersects circle O at C. The measure of arc BD is 110, the measure of arc DE is 60, and the measure of arc EC is 70. Okay, so that's already labeled in our diagram, so that's good. So if you take a look at the arcs around the circle, we know that entire circle is equal to 360 degrees. So if we add the arcs that are given, B, D, D, E, and E, C, we get the sum of 240, and we subtract that from 360. That leaves us with um, a measure for arc B, C as 120, and that's the first value we had to find. Now we want to find the measure of angle B, A, C. So BAC is an outside angle, and I know that that is equal to the difference of the arcs divided in half. So 120 minus 60 is 60, divided in half is 30 degrees. The measure of angle BDC. So BDC is an inscribed angle that opens up to arc 120, so that's 1 half of 120. So that's a 60 degree angle. And the measure of angle DCE is also an inscribed angle that opens up to this arc DE, which is 60 degrees. So angle C is 30 degrees. Number 15, write x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y minus 12 equal to zero in center radius form. Identify and write the center as well as the radius. So again, we're using completing the square. I need to group the like variables together and move the constant to the other side. So if we take 1 half of 4 and square it, we get 2 squared, which is equal to 4. And if we take 1 half of negative 6 and square it, we get 9. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other, so we're going to add 4 as well as 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor my x values here in terms of one factor is x plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to a sum of 25. My center is negative 2, 3. And my radius is the square root of 25, which is 5. So number 16, we're given a circle A with this equation. We want to perform a translation, label it A prime, perform a dilation with a scale factor of 3, and write the equation of a circle for A prime and circles A double prime, which is the dilation. So the first thing I'm going to do with regard to the given equation circle A, I'm going to um, identify the center, which is negative 3, 2, and the radius to be 3. I'm going to go ahead and graph that. So negative 3, 2 is the center, and I'm going to apply a radius of 3. Okay, you use your compass in order to create your circle. I'm not able to do that. So I'm going to do the best that I can, freehand, which I'm not very happy about. So 
So I'm going to perform a translation, and that's a rigid motion that does preserve everything. So uh, the translation is 1, negative 3. I'm going to apply that to the center. So plus 1, minus 3. I get a negative 2, comma, negative 1. It still retains a radius equal to 3. I'm going to graph that circle. We're asked to write the equation of the circle, so I'm going to write that down here. This is a prime. This is a, circle a and a prime. So a prime is equal to x plus 2 square plus y plus 1 square is equal to 3 squares, 9. Now we want to perform a dilation with a scale, scale factor 3. So it's going to keep the same center. So there's similar, this will be a similar circle. Yet it's going to have a magnified radius. So I'm going to go out another 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. One, two, three, and you will use a compass, putting the point in the center of the blue circle, and I'm going to have to do it freehand. Which is definitely not the best way to draw a circle. Okay, so now I have a radius of 6. I'm going to square that and put 36 in my equation. So that concludes the review. Good luck on your exam. See you tomorrow.